Up here on the fifth floor, we have our gallery dedicated to the Famous Five. They were a group of five Alberta women who helped to fight to include women within the legal definition of persons. There was a time when the only people who legally counted as persons were white men over the age of 30 who owned a certain amount of property. This meant that, among other things, people outside of that definition, including women, were not eligible to be appointed to the Canadian Senate. Emily Murphy was the first female police magistrate in the British Commonwealth. She was appointed to that job in 1916, which happened to be the same year that women in Alberta won the right to vote in provincial elections. But because Murphy was not legally considered a person, her appearance in court was often challenged. In 1922, a group of activists were pushing for Emily Murphy to be appointed to the Canadian Senate. But this compelled the government to come forward and say that due to the definitions in the British North America Act, essentially the Canadian Constitution, Emily Murphy did not count as a qualified person and therefore couldn't be appointed. In 1927, Emily Murphy gathered together a group of women, later to be known as the Famous Five. This group included herself, Henrietta Muir Edwards, Irene Parleby, Louise McKinney, and Nellie McClung. These women put together a petition to take to the Supreme Court of Canada asking whether or not the definition of persons included female persons. And what did the Supreme Court say? No. Now, the Supreme Court is the highest court within Canada. So in order to take this case any further, these women actually had to travel to England to speak to a group known as the Privy Council. This isn't an option anymore for Canadian citizens, as we've gained more independence from England. But at the time, if you were turned down by the Supreme Court, the Privy Council of the United Kingdom was your last chance. In 1929, these five women brought a refined version of their petition over to England to the Privy Council, asking the Privy Council, do women count in the definition of persons? And what did the Privy Council say? Yes. In fact, Lord John Sankey, who is the head of the Privy Council, mentioned that the days when women were excluded from these public offices is a relic of days far more barbarous than ours. And to those who ask, why should we include women? I say, why should we not? So finally, the famous five had won their case, what later came to be known as the person's case, and women were eligible to be appointed to the Canadian Senate. In fact, the year after the case, in 1930, Corrine Wilson became the first Canadian female senator. Unfortunately, Emily Murphy never got the chance, but I'm sure she was content with the fact that they won this case and changed that piece of the Canadian Constitution. Now, it's worth mentioning that this was just one fight for equality that has been fought in Canada. Many women and men were still not given full, equal legal status after the person's case, and it took much more time and much more effort to start including everyone within the legal definition of persons. So this can be seen as a starting point to expand our definition and include everyone within the considerations of the Canadian Constitution.